Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter 22. We have a very famous verse in front of us. We started looking at it yesterday and we're going to return to it today. Ezekiel chapter 22. Get your own copy of God's Word out and join me there. If possible, get something on which you can jot some notes. I'll be giving three words that begin with the letter S today to help lay out the verse. I hope they're a blessing to you. But with that pen and paper handy, not only can you take notes, but you can therewith also jot down our contact information because I want to put some gospel tracks into your hand. I'm going to say something about that here in just a moment. But Growing up, and I grew up in the 1950s and 60s, it was a great time, but frankly, any time you're growing up is a great time. But during those times, we had to memorize certain poems in school, and one of the poems I had to learn was Casey at the Bat. Casey at the Bat, it's a great poem by Ernest Thayer. Now, the hopes of the fans of the home team in that poem were hung on the ability of their star player, Mighty Casey. He was a great batter. But as you probably know, that poem ends with these fatal words, Mighty Casey has struck out. Well, that poem is a poem that came out of the imagination of a man who loved baseball. The verse before us today here in Ezekiel 22, it's a chapter where the home team, not a baseball team, but God's home team, the Jewish people, it's where they are in the precarious place and on the very precipice of calamity. And in that hour, God steps in. He seeks for somebody to step to the plate for him, but God strikes out. You heard me right. God struck out. That's the verse before us here. You need to join me in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, and let me show you what I mean. Now, before I begin to read the verse there, I mentioned gospel tracts here a moment ago. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We've been publishing gospel tracts in different languages for 80 years. You heard me, 80 years. We have a motto that we're using this year. The motto says this, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. Just yesterday, as I make this broadcast, making the broadcast in advance, just yesterday, I was in Iowa preaching, and I got to share with the people at the local church what God is doing through gospel tracts, and their mouths dropped open. Friend, gospel tracts are a powerful evangelism tool. The one in my hand right now is entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. How many people have you and I met who think that the Ten Commandments were given by God as a means for you and I to earn our way to heaven? If we just keep our lives gussied up and prettied up enough using the Ten Commandments, we don't break all of them and we just break, well, some of them slightly, then God will kind of grade us on the curve and let us into heaven. Friend, that is not the gospel. It's not the good news. We are saved not by the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were there to show us how desperately in need of a Savior we are because all have sinned. We have broken God's Ten Commandments. 
Dear friend, if you are trying to share the gospel with people who think they are, well, they are okay morally, they're okay spiritually, and God will let them in, you need this track, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. It's just one of over 40 tracks within a sample packet I want to put into your hand. The sample packet is free. Now, friend, we send tracts all over the world free. I'm going to send you the sample packet free, but I can't do it unless you give me your name and your mailing address. Please be ready at the end of the broadcast when my announcer gives our contact information, or you can just simply go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open now to Ezekiel chapter 22, look at verse 30. It says this, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Yesterday, I tried to lay some groundwork for the things that are on my heart here today. I gave a quick overview of the book of Ezekiel yesterday, and if you missed that broadcast, you can just go to our website and listen to yesterday's broadcast there. I did not yesterday give an outline for chapter 22, so let me do that quickly right now. If you got your piece of paper and pencil there, jot this down. There are three parts here, really. Verses 1 through 16 is the part where Ezekiel brings the nation to the courtroom. He uses the illustration of taking them to court. And here he declares the people are guilty, and then he lists their sin crimes. That's verses 1 to 16. In verses 17 to 22, Ezekiel brings the nation to a furnace, to a furnace. Here, Ezekiel pictures Judah as a bunch of mixed up metals, a bunch together full of impurities, and they must go through the smelting fire. They must be purified, and their Babylonian captivity was going to be the furnace fire for them. That's part two, verses 17 to 22. Part number three, verses 23 to 29. Here, Ezekiel brings the nation to a forest. He pictures the people as an unkept piece of property that is overgrown, dried out, and inhabited by vicious animals. He even identifies the animals. He says that the priests and the prophets and the politicians are all acting like roaring lions in verse 25 and ravenous wolves in verse 27. Three times in this chapter, well, actually, every paragraph in this chapter begins with these words, the word of the Lord came unto me. So these three descriptions found here are God's pictures of the nation, not merely Ezekiel's ideas. But the chapter ends with verses 30 and 31. Here is the heart of God. We see it in action. Here is the grace of God and the mercy of God in action. If you're taking notes, jot down those three words beginning with the letter S that I forewarned you about. Here they are. I'm going to give all three right now. The first one is seeking, the second one standing, the third one striking out. Those three words again are seeking, standing, and striking out. First of all, the word seeking. Look at verse 30. It says, I sought for a man. Now, friend, this is God talking through Ezekiel. It's God who is seeking for somebody to be his servant. The Hebrew word that's used here that is translated other places in the Old Testament using words like desire, strive for, and actually the word beg. This is no passive. This is no non-emotional search by God. The Jews are in great danger. Babylon is coming to lay siege to Jerusalem. God knows what's coming, and his heart does not want his people to go through the starvation and to go through the 70-year captivity that's on the very doorstep of their lives. He is not willing that any should perish. Now, that is true spiritually. That is true physically. But with your permission, let me rephrase the opening words of verse 30. They say here in our Bible, it says this, I sought for a man. Let me rephrase them and put it this way. I begged for a man. 
God's willingness at this point, because of the peril that was coming, God was willing to use anybody uh, at all who would just stand up and say his words, stand in the gap and say his words. It didn't matter who they were, if they were politically correct or if they were a politician or if they were a priest or just a farmer, somebody he was seeking. The second word is the word standing. The verse 30 goes on to say, I sought for a man among them. And then it says that should stand in the gap. Now, what gap is God talking about here? Well, chapter 22 says that there were gaps in the priesthood, gaps among the prophets, gaps among the politicians and other key leaders in society. These people were supposed to be people who protected the nation, and they would protect the nation by keeping their focus, the lives of the people and their eyes focused on their God. But they, these False people, these false priests, prophets, and politicians promised false things. They lied. They said, here's the message from God, and it wasn't from God. They promised, well, what's the word in our day? Fake news. God will never let us go into captivity. So God was looking for others who would stand up in their place and do it right. The only trait God was seeking here was a man that that knew how to stand how to put himself or herself in a gap. There were gaps in the church services of their day. There were gaps in the courtrooms of their day. There were gaps at the city council meetings of their day. No one who really knew God would stand for God. That brings me to my third word, striking out. God struck out. Verse 30 ends with these words. God is talking. I found None. In these days, in the day that you and I are living, in these days, when political corruption abounds, God is seeking for somebody. In these days with when religious corruption abounds, God is seeking for somebody. In these days of judicial corruption, God is seeking for individuals who will, by faith, stand for him, warn others for him, and speak his truth on his behalf who be his ambassadors. Dear friends, some of the greatest ambassadors for Christ are found in pulpits, yes, are found in the mission fields, yes, but some of them are found in school board meetings. Some of them are found in being a principal at a school, a teacher at a school. Some of them are managers at at Walmart and managers at McDonald's. Some of them are, are working on a line at some factory someplace. It doesn't matter where they're working but there's somebody who will stand and speak for God. You and I live in an era where God is still seeking. The political, the moral, the religious climate of our day stinks. So God looks for individuals. Will you and I be found by God to stand for him in our day, in the cultural morass of our day? Why don't you get those gospel tracts? That's a great way to start standing in the gap for God, giving lost people the gospel. Dear friend, if you do not know Christ as Savior, you are a mission field. You're on your way to a Christless eternal punishment in hell. But there's a way of escape through Jesus Christ who loves you and died on the cross to save you from your sin. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.